Let me acknowledge the presence of my fellow heads of state and government, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Honorable Ministers from all our countries that are present, uh, business community members that will be with us today. Let me also simply say, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and indeed the media. First, our hearts go out to you, President Ruto, and the people of Kenya for the loss of lives arising from the floods um, that Kenya and other parts of our continent are experiencing. The loss of lives, property, dislocation of people is regrettable. It's um, ironic that um, you're going through floods here when we in Zambia and the rest of Southern Africa are experiencing the worst drought in recorded history. Yet we are just, for us, two hours and 30 minutes away from you. So floods here, drought there. Climate change is really distorting our lives. Let me also acknowledge those that have spoken before me. The issues they've raised are all valid, and that's what brings us here together in this summit. Fertilizer and the health of our soils. We need to find solutions. We are delighted to note that our experts have been here ahead of us discussing these issues, these challenges, and how we can contrive solutions uh, to them to address one of the critical insecurity aspects on our continent, which is food. And with drought and floods, sometimes in the same season, it means that even our green energy agenda is impaired, as it is in Zambia, I'm sure Zimbabwe, since we share common assets on uh, green energy generation hydro power stations. We have food insecurity, we have also energy insecurity. This is a double tragedy, and for us to drive increased food production, we do need energy. So you can see, I know here we are talking about fertilizer, soil health, for food security. But the flip side of that is also energy security. So we need at some other point, or at the back of our minds, to be looking at how we address the energy security as well, to allow us to support the improvement in the agricultural production as a consequence of applying appropriately fertilizer, appropriately fertilizer, I repeat that, given the soils, the crops that we produce in our countries, but also the continuity in the health of our soils, which is in a way invariably affects climate change if we don't manage these variables correctly. So we agree with colleagues that have spoken before we arrived with the heads of state, the technical people that have been here, we bank on you to make solid recommendations for implementation so we can remedy the challenges that we're facing. Let me just touch one or two things uh, to put context to the conversation. Um, fertilizer has to be available. But fertilizer has to be affordable as well. Very important. There's no point making more fertilizer, appropriate fertilizer available, if it's not affordable to our farmers, because we will not achieve the intended objective to increase productivity, as well as, if you like, to secure for the most vulnerable food for their family members. There's been a touch already made on the appropriateness of fertilizer. In the past, most of our countries, although we are pushing to increase the quantum of fertilizer we apply, 
50 kgs as it is as it were it is true that we have been applying fertilizer lesser quantities yes but also inappropriate fertilizer because we've not done enough soil testing we've not done enough research and therefore development on the varieties that need to be treated differently. So I do believe that this outcome, President Ruto, the outcome of this conference will address those issues as well. If fertilizer is not affordable, it means when we produce the food, the food will be expensive. That's what we need to take account of as a team working together. We shouldn't depend on others to supply us with fertilizer from outside the continent. Therefore, we need to invest, I agree with President Ruto, on our continent to increase the capacity to produce fertilizer. Yes, using our raw materials as much as possible, those that are available. And the continent has these raw materials, which must be exploited effectively. But we need to invest in order to exploit these resources. And we've been singing this song that when we invest, we must ensure that we mobilize capital which is fairly priced. Otherwise, there will be a cost push on the fertilizer that we produce. So the issue of fair, correct price of capital remains valid in these conversations. And I would like to repeat what we've been saying before. We mobilize capital, we mobilize technology, which is also critical. Capital at the right price, technology, appropriate technology, not a second feeder. We want to leapfrog as a continent to the best technology available. Very important. We also, as we talk about investment in fertilizer, we must talk about trading with each other. There's no point that we work together to increase capacity to produce fertilizer, but a number of us on the continent are still placing orders to purchase fertilizer from other parts of the world. It means we're failing to support the investments that we've made for them to be viable. And if they're not viable, we know the consequences. So I think it's important that the technical colleagues that have been deliberating on this matter, we, the heads of state, include in our minimum requirements buying from each other. In Zambia, we've started practicing that on fertilizer and other aspects Two years since we took office, two and a half years now, we've been able to move from almost a zero situation or minimum situation of producing fertilizer, especially uh, the best of dressing, to self-sufficiency, and we'll be moving towards self-sufficiency on the top dressing. But we have also deliberately said that we shall practice what we're calling positive discrimination, buy from ourselves. So that should apply for us what we don't produce, buy from Zimbabwe, buy from Kenya, buy from someone else on the continent. But I think this is something that we must make as a minimum amongst the others that we buy from ourselves. Then we can commercially support the decisions that we'll be making out of such conferences. Abuja declarations a long time ago, why haven't we made progress? We need to introspect and begin to address those issues that have not allowed us to make progress as we would have loved. Let me also indicate something here, which I know has been touched by colleagues already, even before we arrived, we who came uh, only last night, and to be here for this uh, morning's conversation. I think while we want to apply appropriate fertilizers, quantities, take account of soil types, yes, but productivity carries a very important value here. We shouldn't be going for putting on farming or bringing into farming activities all the hectares that is available and can be farmed. 
We can avoid that because if we go that way, we we'll damage the environment further. It will instigate more floods, more droughts. We know that on that side. I think we should drive productivity to levels where the hectare is under cultivation. Doesn't necessarily have to expand by bringing down more trees. Productivity, the hectare that we already have under, uh, under cultivation. I think that's very important so that we manage the two evils, food insecurity, but also reducing climate uh, damage, so to say. I think then it will be more and more uh, complete as a continent. I must also say, again, with the drive on climate change, droughts, we need to invest in agriculture driven by irrigation as much as possible. So I'm just touching on things that I think we should be alive to as we come to maybe reaching conclusions whenever we do that. Precision irrigation is very important. If I may say, going forward, we need we who run public affairs together with the private sector who bring to the table the challenges, the farmers that produce, who bring the challenges that they face imposed by the legal and regulatory framework and police framework, we have to address those issues so that investments in fertilizer production, investment in actual primary agriculture, investments in processing, agro-processing, value addition, storage, transportation, logistics, roads, railways, are all brought under control, but the environment in our countries must improve. The operating environment must improve. Legislation, legal impediments must also be isolated clearly within national boundaries and beyond national boundaries. I would like to make that argument in this uh, uh, summit as well. I think it will be helpful that we took into account those issues. I guess my colleagues have also mentioned the importance of soil mapping. Digitization, uh, President Munangagwa has touched on that, is extremely imperative. Maybe we should set targets as to when we should conclude this baseline work, such as soil mapping, uh, Prime Minister, and digitization, so we can improve knowledge of what soils we have in our countries, across our countries, on the continent and being able to talk to each other, sharing best, best practices. I think this is important uh, in my view. And then we'll be able to manage our soils better, sustainably, without damaging them, but we'll also be able to use fertilizer in the correct way. I do believe that this we can do under three years. We should set ambitious targets in order to address the laxities out of the Abuja declaration, we should set tight ta timelines, targets. Realistic, yes, but they must be ambitious because Africa cannot wait. The young population needs food, vulnerable families need food, young population need jobs. They need jobs not just in primary production, but also in secondary uh, industries arising from agriculture, produce as food raw material, but also industrial raw materials. I think it's very important that um, African Union Chair, we consider these tight timelines so we can be, if you like, remedial to the challenges that we face following the Abuja Declaration. If I may also say, we in Zambia committed to the declarations that we make here. And I believe all of us should be committed. And maybe what is important is to work out a matrix of implementation measures that we can share as a common checklist, all of us. Of course, country specific, but also Africa specific in a way, broader than our own national boundaries. I think that's what will bring us together even more on the different aspects. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup. Asante San. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those remarks. Next, I would like to invite His Excellency for Star, Akhonj Wadera, President of the Central African Republic, to make his remarks.